the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today, according to our beloved and holy church, is the Feast of Pentecost. This is according to the old Julian calendar. It is the Feast of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit descended on the 120 people who were sitting in the upper room as the tongue of fire, and they were all filled by the Holy Spirit. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks and nuns, and our beloved faithfuls, those who are present here in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may this holy feast of Pentecost be an abundant blessing for you, for your families, and for the people who are in your, in your life, for the whole holy apostolic universal church, the one and only bride to the heavenly bridegroom, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name. Pentecost is a Greek word meaning 50th. The Lord Jesus, after rising from the dead, he remained on earth for 40 days. After resurrection, he remained on earth for 40 days. And during these 40 days, he appeared to his beloved disciples 10 times. And the last one was, he took him all the way to the mount top of Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and from there he ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of his father and he remained 10 days and after 10 days he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in us through the holy baptism one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Christ so 40 days after resurrection he ascends to heaven remains 10 days, then the Holy Spirit descends to dwell in us, makes it 50 days, Pentecost 50th. Today, the church of our Lord Jesus is born in the New Testament. Today, the new baby is born. The church is born in the New Testament, the birth of the church. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Holy Trinity. As Christians, true Christians, we must believe that God is Trion, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in essence, one God in nature. So the Holy Spirit is the third person. In the Old Testament, it was God the Father who spoke. In the New Testament, God the Son came and dwelt in the womb of the Virgin of all virgins forever, our Holy Mother Mary, and became man like us. And he spoke the Son of God in the flesh, the Word incarnate, spoke on earth until the crucifixion and after resurrection, until ascension into heaven, it was the Son speaking. And when the Holy Spirit descended on Pentecost, from Pentecost, the 50th day, till the second coming of the Messiah, the, the heavenly groom, to take his bride, the church, without a blemish, without a stain, and bring it into the Father's house until the second coming of the Messiah, it is the Holy Spirit speaking in the Church of Christ. Why are we here? It is the Holy Spirit who brought us. How can we work for the Lord? It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. How are we able 
to come back and repent before the Lord Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit's doing. How can I be able to sing and worship and praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit? How can I preach the Holy Spirit? How can I touch the hearts of people, the Holy Spirit? How can I come back to Jesus Christ and accept him Lord and Savior over my life? It is the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit in him, we move in him, we live in him, we exist and in him we move. Everything is the Holy Spirit. Yet, in general, as Christians, we got used to the name of Jesus Christ only. Lord, I love you. Jesus, have mercy on me. Son of David, son of Mary, son of the carpenter, son of God, good, the good shepherd, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, Lord, have mercy on me. We rarely invoke the name of the Father and invoke the name of the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus Christ always, most of the time at least. But don't forget, we are living in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is living in us. Who sent the Holy Spirit from the Father? Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself. Our Lord and God. Today is Pentecost. It's about the Holy Spirit. Time out, Jesus. Oops, <laughs> there is never time out, Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. The Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. They're all one God, same. In nature, they are the same. Have you been through certain times in your life? And those times I'll call them moments. Because a moment is shorter than a time. Have you been through a moment in your life when there was an awakening in you you've never felt, you've never tasted before? We have, we have woken up every morning. We've been doing it for so many years now. And may the Lord bless you and give you a long life. We've woken up so many times. But have you ever woken up once? And as you opened your eyes, there was an urge, I must go to church. There was an urge, I must speak to the Lord Jesus. There was an urge, I miss the Lord. There was an urge, I miss going to the bosom of Christ. There was an urge, I must repent. I have been away from the Lord for so long. I have deserted him. I have walked away from him. I am heavy and laid in, in burden. I need the Lord. That moment of realization of a great need for the love of Christ and his mercy, that moment is the touch of the Holy Spirit. 100%, 100%. The church calls it the visitation of graces. The Holy Spirit visitation of graces. It is a grace from the Lord for the Holy Spirit to touch your heart and awaken you. To touch your heart and make you thirst for the Lord, hunger for the Lord. You are longing for the Lord. You cry. You are seeking Him. You need Him. Desperately you need Him. These are graces of the Holy Spirit. You are being visited by God through His Holy Spirit. When you encounter such 
visitations of graces. I beg you, do not delay the calling. Do not delay the calling. If it's midnight and you feel like going to church, sit in the car and go. The Lord wants to tell you something. The Lord wants to reveal something for you. If you don't go, you will miss out on this greatest gift of revelation. If it's urging you to get up and pray, do it. Even if you are tired and you had a very long day at work and you slept late and you are extremely exhausted, you opened your eyes and you are barely opening your eyes. You're aching everywhere. But inside of you, this clear voice says, get up and pray. Do it. Because you don't know what the Lord is about to bless you with. You don't know. You see, not everything the Lord will give you unless you listen to Him. There are certain things the Lord has given you without you asking for it because you wouldn't even know how to ask for it. But there are certain things the Lord has put them aside until you say, yes, Lord, then the Lord will give you. And the reason for that is the Lord wants to test your love for him. It is easily said than done. I can say to the Lord, I love you. It's so easy, but he wants to see it in action, not with words. Will you love me when I allow you to walk through the dark tunnel? Will you love me when I allow you to be persecuted? Will you love me when I allow you to fall? Will you love me when I allow you to see yourself naked, meaning sinner? Will you? There is so much to be said about the Holy Spirit. Oh, when you get filled by the Holy Spirit, you're on fire. It's like this. A time will come, you will be colder than Antarctica. You become an iceberg yourself. And don't worry about climate change. That ain't going to melt you. You will be as cold as the Northern Pole. You feel nothing. You know nothing. You're lost. You're empty. You're void. And then all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus comes to embrace you. How is the Lord Jesus going to embrace you? He will embrace you by His Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit engulfs you, that miserable person a moment ago, that so lost person, so weak, who had given up on everything, all of a sudden is Tarzan for the Lord Jesus. You become Hercule, actually stronger than Hercule. You will lift Hercule with the smallest finger that you have in your hand. What happened? You just gave up a moment ago. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of receiving God's power. When you are engulfed by the Holy Spirit, you are fearless. 
You are bold. When you speak, you speak with fire. When you speak, you speak with no reservation, no limitation, no hypocrisy. Why? Because it is God speaking through you. God is fire. God is sharper than a double edged sword. God fears nothing, fears no one. The moment the Holy Spirit or the, that touch of grace leaves, I become me. Good old Simon. Oh, I start crying for myself. Lord, why is this happening to me? What's going to happen tomorrow, Lord? What is the future holding for me? I don't know. I'm scared. I'm worried for my kids, for my husband, for my wife, for my loved ones. Look what's happening in the world. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. You become afraid of your own shadow. You become afraid. But when God fills you up, Lord, I'm going downtown, Lord Jesus. I'm going to change King's Cross into the Holy Cross. I'm going to wipe Star City Casino and I'll make it a hub for transformation, not vaccination. I'll make it a hub for transformation. This person walks in, an atheist leaves, saint. Oh, when the Holy Spirit works in a person, oh my goodness. What do you think? Twelve disciples, twelve fishermen, ordinary people, no sword, no knife, no weapon, no belt, red belt in karate or black belt, nothing. Twelve weak people were sent to the entire world. They left their homeland. You see, when you leave your country, the place where you're born and you go to another country, you are vulnerable, you are exposed, you are so weak, you are so fragile because you're, now you are in a foreign land. You don't know what the culture is like, the way they live. The system is totally different. I was used to it for 30, 40 years and all of a sudden I am placed in a situation I have no idea. They changed the whole world without blowing no bombs, without no suicide bombers, my dear friend. Give up on this nonsense. This is not God. God will never tell you to go and kill. Only Satan tells you to go and kill. God came, killed himself to give us life. This is the true divine God we worship. They changed the whole world with only one shirt, no money in the pocket, no food on the table, no food preserved for tomorrow in a, in a piece of cloth, nothing. They changed the whole world. We are Christians because of them. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. When you read in the book of Joel, he's a prophet of the Old Testament. Joel, J-O-E-L. When you read in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses, I believe, 26 to 28. The Lord God is speaking through Joel and he says, I will pour out my spirit in the end of times. Your sons and your daughters will see dreams and they will see visions. I will pour out my spirit in the end of times. 
That's why the Holy Spirit is resembled by water or the water symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the water, my beloved, when it flows, when it runs, there is only one way for the water to flow when it goes from top to bottom. It has to flow downward. Water will never go upward, will always go downward. That is the trajectory of the water. Water flows only downward. God's Spirit cannot go up, for there is no one above God. He is the ultimate sovereign authority. God's Spirit can only do one thing for the Spirit to come down. I will pour out my Spirit. The word pouring applies to water. And we say it, can you please pour me a glass of water? Don't we say that? Can you please pour me a glass of water? So when you pour, you get the jug and you get the glass, you put the jug high and above the glass and you pour the water downward. The Holy Spirit can only come down. And coming down meaning, unless we are humble, we cannot be filled by the Holy Spirit. Unless we are humble, we cannot be filled by the Holy Spirit. A boastful person, someone who, is, who has self-pride and think they are something extra special, they cannot be filled by the Holy Spirit. You are suffocating the Holy Spirit inside of you every time you become a boastful person. Humble yourself for God to fill you with His Holy Spirit humility and humility we will never humble ourselves my beloved as this fallen human nature the moment we brought God's Word in the Garden of Eden we our nature became fallen corrupt this corrupt fallen human nature will never will never humble itself until God breaks it God has to break us in order to make us humble because He wants to fill us with His Holy Spirit because until we are filled by the Holy Spirit, we have no wisdom in us. The source of wisdom is the Holy Spirit. The only way to receive wisdom is when the Holy Spirit grants it to you. And the only way the Holy Spirit will grant it to you is when you're humble. And there is no way for you to be humble until God breaks you. So what does God have to do? He will have to put you in a corner. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Am I scaring you? You're going to say, why am I following the Lord Jesus? I don't want to fight in a boxing ring. <laughs> No, no, no. He will get you no matter where you run. You can run, but you cannot hide. Don't be Jonah. He said, go to Nineveh. You better go to Nineveh. Don't go to Tarshish. Don't go to Spain. Go to Iraq, baby. Where are you running? The Lord is saying, come to church. You're too busy. Because you have too many friends in your circle. And the Lord has been calling you saying, come to my house. I am waiting for you every single day. And I've been waiting for many years. But you have been too busy for me. You went with this and with that and with the whole world except Jesus. You forgot about your Lord. I've been calling you, my child, for too long. Time is running out. You left me no choice, my child. I'll have to do it the hard way. The easy way, when I called you, you should have listened and came. Since you ignored my callings, you're leaving me no choice because I love you. You're my son. You're my, you're my child. I will not let you go to hell. I'll do the impossible. And I did the impossible. I died on the cross for you. And I was buried for you. And I rose for you. 
not for me, for you. I did all that to save you and bring you to me at the end. Therefore, I will do anything and everything just to bring you to me. You leave me no choice, my child. I am going to corner you. And in that corner, I will give you the uppercut. It's a knockout, my child. When I knock you out, I will give you this mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, first aid. When I give you this mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, I am reviving you, my child, because you were dead. When you were away from me, you were dead. Spiritually, you were dead. Physically, yes, your eyes are opened and you're talking and you're breathing, but spiritually, you were dead. I need to knock you down in order to put you back on your feet. Unless I break you, I cannot make you. So, I will take you away from everyone you love. Who is the one that is taking you away from me? I'll take them away from you. Would you like that? Oh, I'm scared now. Husband and wife love one another in Christ. Love one another in Christ, not for your sake, not for my sake, but for Christ's sake, I love you. And for Christ's sake, you must love me back. When you read the Holy Bible, all the figures mentioned in the Holy Bible, every single one of them was broken by God. <laughs> David, <laughs> whoa, God broke him in order to fill him. Abraham broke him. He buried his father. He lost his nephew. He went his way and Abraham went his way. He had no child till the age of 100. Ishmael came, yes, but that was an earthly birth. He was waiting for the promised child, Isaac. 100 years. He waited 100 years to, for, for, for Isaac. Everyone was broken. My beloved, some of us won't relate to what I'm saying now, maybe. I hope everyone will. There are some that are very young still. You see, we will never understand ourselves. By the way, the greatest mystery to one's self is one's self. You are the greatest mystery to your own self. You think you know yourself. Oh, you'll be surprised, my dear friend, when God puts you in a certain situation. You'll be surprised. You're going to say, was that me? Did I really say that? Did I really behave in this way? Whoa, that is not me. No, 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 that's you. But that is the deep, the deep person in you that was asleep. But this person needed to be awakened and it needed an earthquake to wake that person up. But that's you. When I was put in a difficult situation, I lost it. I even told God off before. Oh, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord Jesus. I worship the Lord Jesus. But now, when I was placed in this difficult, difficult situation, I started questioning God and why are you doing this to me? When God breaks a person, it is extremely painful. I'm telling you, it is extremely painful. But the blessings, the blessings, the blessings that you receive from God by breaking you are priceless, endless, beyond imagination. 
So when God breaks a person, he rewards the person a million zillion times much greater than what he has broken you with. But when God breaks, you know, he is an expert in this. Right? He's a master in breaking people. He's, great. He's brilliant. And he does it in a way, no yelling, no screaming, no screaming, nothing. And so pe parents, when children disobey them, oh, they turn the whole world upside down just to bring their child back. They'll go to the police, they'll go to the judge, they'll go to the prime minister, they'll come to every church. They'll knock at every door, they bring, they'll bring heaven down with all the saints and the angels in heaven, including Jesus. Just bring my child. The whole world is gone on a 10 rector scale, on, on, on the 10 on the rector scale with earthquake. The Lord is very silent. He'll come, he'll say, okay, you don't want to come? No problem. You wake up one day, I lost my job. <laughs> You wake up another day, your friends has gone against you. You wake up another day, family members who were so close to you, now they don't want to see your face. What happened? What have I done? I never done nothing. Those friends of mine, when we were going downtown, brother, hmm? we had so much fun together, brother. I thought they were friends forever the most loyal people forever. Before I even blinked my eyes, they deserted me. They walked away from me. And now I am fallen and I'm looking around. There is no one, no one at all. When any one of us faces such a situation where you turn around and you see no one, you feel no one, you hear no one, the first person for the first time in your life will come to mind is God. <laughs> That's the first one, for the first time. See, God used to come to your mind, but he was not the first. He came number 101. God is not happy. He said, I'm first, and you better make me first. And if you're not going to make me first, I'll force you to make me first. Because I love you. So what do you love the most? I'll smack you with it. But once he breaks us, at that moment only, for the first time ever, I've discovered my true self. What is my true self? I'm truly nothing. I thought I was something. I thought I was a genius. I thought I built the house. I thought I built the church. I thought I preached to the people and brought them close to Christ. I thought when I laid my hand, the sick were healed. I thought I was the one who planned everything. It turned out to be I was nothing from the very start. Everything was the Lord. Everything was the Lord. Everything was the Lord. When God broke me, I realized it, not with words, but I'm truly living it now. For the first time ever, I come to this truth. I am nothing. And Christ is everything. In that moment, Christ will fill you with his Holy Spirit. And when he fills you, you look at the world for the first time ever in your life, you will see it a piece of filth. Before, when I passed by a club, I started shaking. Oh, it's a club. Rah. The pokies. Wah. The scotch on the rock. Wah. The sniffing. Wah. The gambling. I start itching, I start shaking. My wife is waiting for me to bring the milk back home and some groceries. Who cares? What wife, what tribe, what Habibi, forget. This is heaven. This is... This is 
This is uh, <laughs> barbecue time, baby. So you'd go in there and you are revived. You are revitalized. You're so fresh. You came to church asleep, especially when Bishop Murray was talking. But when I went downtown, brother, and I saw all the lights and those skyscrapers and lights on earth walking, whoa, good looking gazelles, baby. When I saw all the lights of the city, I said, now you're talking, brother. You're telling me to go to church. Are you sick in the head or are you sick in the head? Which one is it? Church is for the oldies. Church is for those who are old fashioned. This is not life. Life is downtown. And then before you know it, downtown became your prison cell. And when you realized that you are broken by God, you realize that you're nothing. That moment is the turning moment in your life, the decisive. It takes God to break you in order to change you, period. My advice to you, don't ever be angry at people who have gone against you. Don't ever try to revenge and retaliate with those people who have hurt you in your life because those who have gone against you, those who have hurt you, they are a blessing for you, my dear friend. If you are seeking Christ, they are a blessing. Maybe those who were good to you, they could have been a curse and you did not know it. But those who have hurt me, have made my path straight to the Lord. This is in the Psalm. Lord, the wicked have made my path to you straight. The wicked, not the righteous. <laughs> See, the Lord uses both of them, the good and the bad, to make you straight. If the good will make you straight, he'll use the good. If the bad gonna make you straight, he'll use the bad. But he wants you to be straight, so he'll use either. Whatever makes you straight, Now I'll leave you with this. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> the Holy Spirit gives us two things. St. Paul talks about them. He calls one side the fruits of the Spirit, the other one the gifts of the Spirit. The fruits and the gifts. These are granted by the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now gifts. What are the gifts? Preaching is a gift. Healing is a gift. Teaching is a gift. Bringing people to the Lord is a gift. The gifts when, when God gives you those gifts through the Holy Spirit, those gifts do not save the one who has them. They save those who receive them, accept them, and acknowledge them. So I'll explain. I'm preaching to you. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift of preaching does not save me. It saves you when you hear what I'm preaching and accept what I'm preaching. Blessed are you for you have received the word of Christ through the preaching of this useless person. This preaching does not save me. It saves those who hear and receive the word of God. So preaching does me no good. All I get is a headache and a back pain. But you're saved if you accept what, you listen, what you're hearing. Blessed are you. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, the number one fruit 
the number one in the list love 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 the fruits of the Holy Spirit they work the opposite way to the gifts the fruits save the one who carries them not the one who receives them save the one who carries them not the one who receives them love when you sow love when you plant love in people's hearts and people's lives whoever God brings your way you show them love they give it back to you with pain and hatred and you keep on showing him love and they keep on hurting you you keep on showing love and they keep on hurting you one day you say until when I am am I going to be mr. nice guy from this moment onward if anybody hurts me I'll chop their head no more mr. nice guy you lost if you saw love and the other person gives it back to you with hatred it's not your problem don't be upset God allowed you to sow love in people's lives this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit why God allowed you because he wants to save you he wants to reward you he wants to pay you for your hard labor how are you gonna have a mansion in his heaven if you don't so love so if people do not accept it that is none of your business your job is to so love do not wait for the return of love you've sown love walk away people accept it people reject it it is not my business my job was to sow that love period when you saw love in the end God will give himself to you that's the reward because God is love so he will give himself as a gift to you I'll um, truly leave you with this true story um, St. Paul in 1st Corinthians 13 talks about love see this is the true divine love the fruit of the Holy Spirit love so 1st Corinthians 13 which is made out of 13 verses it is talking about the fruit of love true divine love he goes on in that verse and he says love believes in everything love believes in everything and someone would wonder what does Saint Paul mean that love believes in everything I'll tell you what this verse actually means a true story true story not many years ago very recently there was this bishop definitely not me there was this bishop in this particular country in this particular city he was very well known for his kind heart and generosity very well known whatever money came to the church donations whatever money came whoever approached the bishop and asked for help he would give that entire money to that person in need it got up to a stage he got into trouble with the church council you see people that think earthly should not interfere with the affairs of the church don't ever think earthly don't ever come and say to the bishop how are we gonna pay the electricity bill how are we going to pay for the wages how are we going to pay for all the expenses where are we gonna get the money if you are spending it left right and center helping this guy and that guy you be quiet this house is neither mine nor yours this house belongs to Jesus Christ of Nazareth who is God revealed in the flesh the treasury of God never ends my beloved what are you talking about don't ever use your head when you come and work in the house of the Lord let the Lord move you not you 
Don't be an accountant. Don't be an administrator. Be a servant and, a, and, an, and an obedient one. Jesus says, get up. Yes, Lord. Be quiet. Yes, Lord. Get out. Yes, Lord. Come here. Yes, Lord. And see what the Lord is going to do for you. So anyway, the word spread around and went around that there is this bishop. He must be ignorant. He can't be this ignorant to help anyone and everyone who comes to him. So one day, three thieves, true story, three thieves, they said, you know what? We're going to play a little game on this bishop and we're going to have fun and we'll grab money out of him and we're going to laugh at him. So they sat together and said, one of us is going to remain in this place. The other two are going to go to the bishop and put on, a, on, a, on an act, a show. We're going to cry and we're going to shed some tears and say to the bishop, Bishop, please come to our rescue. Our beloved friend, the very closest friend to us, more than a brother for us, he just died. Can you give us money? We don't have money to bury our friend. Please, Bishop. So they went to the Bishop and they begged him with tears. The Bishop felt sorry. He took everything out of the treasure house and gave it to those people. They went jumping, dancing, singing from, of, of, with joy. They said, yes, we played the trick on the Bishop and we made fun of him this bishop has no brain so they ran to their friend whom they left in that particular place they came to him and said friend get up look at us we're rich we have two hundred dollars at that time was a lot of money you can buy half a fairfield with it <laughs> or nita city at least <laughs> they said get up friend Look how much money we took out of this ignorant bishop. They came to wake him up. He was dead. True story. He was truly dead. Did you get it? They said, we'll go and tell the bishop our friend just died. The bishop said, okay. As you say, let it be. You see, the bishop is a saint. He was a saint on earth. He's definitely a saint in heaven now, in paradise. He knew they were playing a game. But you see, the bishop is not afraid of nothing and of no one. You know why? Because the bishop is showing the act of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He's showing love. And when he's showing love, he's concerned of no one. Why? Because God is love and God is with me now. Therefore, I fear no one. They can lie to me, but they cannot lie to my God. They can steal from me, but they cannot steal from my God. Let it be as your words. Let it be as you say, your friend is dead. He is really dead. Go and bury him now with the $200. When they saw her, their friend dead, they came running to the bishop, fell on the ground at, the, at his feet. They said, Bishop, please take the $200. We are sorry. Please pray for us. Please pray on us and absolve us, for we have sinned before God and before you. We have lied to the Holy Spirit. Our friend is really dead now. Please pray for him, for the Lord to have mercy on his departed soul. But please, take your money, Bishop. <laughs> when you walk with the Lord, nothing is lost. Nothing. So, are you worried somebody took something from you? <laughs> The Lord Jesus was walking, two brothers, brothers from one mother's womb, 
they came to him and said, can you judge between us? My brother's taken the land and he doesn't want to give me a portion of this land. The Lord said, who made me a judge over you? You know what the Lord was saying? You're fighting over a piece of land. When are you going to wake up? The very land you are fighting over is the very land that is going to swallow you both and it will be the graveyard for you and your brother. The land you are making a big deal over is your burial area, is your grave. This is the land you're fighting for. They took my throne. I'm a bishop alone. Oh, that sounds like a poet. And I'm a poet, I didn't even realize that. They took my throne, I'm a bishop alone. But I'm not alone, for my heavenly daddy is with me. Hey, um, um, I thank the Lord for you. But you know what? L ask the Lord to teach you this. If there is one lesson for every one of us to learn, ask the Lord to teach you this lesson. With you, Lord, on the face of this earth, I need nothing, I want nothing. With you, Lord, on the face of this earth, I need nothing, I want, I want nothing. I'll ask for nothing, I'll seek nothing. I will knock at nothing, but all I want is you. I'm a bishop. It's nothing if I don't have you, Lord. I'm in the church. It's nothing if I don't have you, Lord. I am rich. It's nothing if I don't have you, Lord. I have a family. It's nothing if the Lord is not the head of the family. I have people around me. I have people of great influence. I know the president. I know the prime minister. I know the judge. I know the commander. I know this and I know that. It is nothing if I don't have the Lord. The Lord is everything. Ask him to teach you this. Whatever comes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whatever. You allow me to put the crown on this head? I thank you, Lord. You don't want this crown to be put on this head? I thank you, Lord. You want me to be a bishop today? I thank you, Lord. You want me to be a street beggar tomorrow? I thank you, Lord. You want me in the church and sit at the gutter? Lord, matters not. The place matters not. I am looking for the owner. Not the place, but the owner of the place. I'm looking for you, Lord. I'm looking for you. Holy Spirit, on this holy day, Pentecost, Holy Spirit, fill me with you. Holy Spirit, engulf me by you. Holy Spirit, let your fire engulf this being. Let me be all for Christ. Let me be all for my Lord Jesus. Allow me to imitate Christ on earth. Make me another Christ on earth. I want to be Lord. I want to be Jesus on earth. I want to imitate my master. I want to walk in his footprints. And whatever came his way, let it come my way. But as long as Holy Spirit, you're with me. The love of my heavenly father is with me. The son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is embracing me and is carrying me on the wings of an eagle called the Holy Cross. Love the Lord and ask for the Holy Spirit to come. I pray the Holy Spirit visits those hearts that have frozen up. 
and with his holy fire melts those frozen hearts and give him life again I pray I pray for unity to happen at home with families I pray for the conversion of souls that are lost in this world I pray I pray those who are in prison to be set free not only from physical chains but from spiritual chains more so I pray I pray for healings both physical and more so spiritual healings Holy Spirit unite us Holy Spirit humble us Holy Spirit open our eyes to see the Sun s-o-n so when I see the Sun I see the Father and then I have eternal life let's bow our heads ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness through the love of God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit and by the precious blood of the Lamb of God Jesus Christ of Nazareth may the Lord have mercy on all of us amen our good God and full of mercy our good God and full of mercy whose grace and mercy is poured upon all pour my Lord the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance renew in them your Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess worship and praise your holy name the Lord of all Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever Amen may the Lord Jesus bless you guide you and protect you and a very very happy Pentecost feast day which is one of the seven feasts in the Holy Church and it's a very very big day today my beloved where the church is born in the New Testament one thing my beloved after the Holy Mass service I encourage you not to go home straight away we make our way to the church hall we are um, celebrating um, today we had celebration of birthdays for our little angels in the Divine Heart Sunday School so whatever we did in the morning sister Mary and the teachers um, uh, decided to do it in the evening as well for those beautiful children that come on Sunday evening and join our Sunday school we want them to also have some cake and blow up some candles and we sing happy birthday even if it's not their birthday doesn't matter you know we are all born one day doesn't matter today tomorrow yesterday all good eat cake have fun enjoy it brother and then pay me five dollars twenty plus GST plus carbon tax plus carbon emission <laughs> all right <laughs> so after the Holy Mass service we're gonna go into the church hall and we're gonna sing happy birthday those who have a beautiful voice prepare yourself warm up the throat mm, basita, basita. I'll chop you basita. warm up the throat and sing happy birthday to you that's that's the Eastern style happy birthday God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you the most. <laughs>